Alright guys, today we're going to start trying to figure out how do we determine the least common multiple of polynomials. Okay, this is really kind of a different thing uh, than we've been doing so far because we're not really looking to find a simplified expression or anything. We're just trying to find the expression that's the least common multiple of a couple different expressions. Okay, so it's a little bit different. Um, what I want you to do first is complete this top section. I want you to find the least common multiple of two numbers. Okay, I want you to find the least common multiple of those two numbers that are given to you. Okay, do that for everything in the top section, pause, and then come back. Okay, so least common multiple of 6 and 8, 24. Least common multiple of 4 and 12 is 12. Least common multiple of 24 and 36 is 72. Okay, so the question is, how in the world did I get, oops, sorry, how did I get all of those numbers? Well, uh, with numbers, it's pretty easy because you can just kind of start multiplying in your head. Like, I like to multiply the smaller one and keep in mind the, the numbers that multiply for the bigger one. So 6, 12, 18, 24. Oh, yeah, 8 goes into 24. Hooray. Um, but we need kind of a more direct way of doing it. So I'm going to quickly write the prime factorization of uh, each of those numbers. So here's how you can use the prime factorization to create the least common multiple. Basically what you have to do is you have to look at how many of each kind of number each one has and you have to make sure there's at least that many in there. Okay, so the 6 requires that you have at least 1, 2, and 1, 3. Okay, so I know 2 times 3 is going to have a part of my answer. Okay, uh, the, all the 8 requires is that you have at least 3 2's. Well, if I look at 2 times 3, it's already got 1, 2, so I just need to add 2 more 2's onto the end. See, it's the smallest combination of those numbers that has the same uh, amount of numbers as each of the first couple. So like, look, I can see 2 times 3 in there. I can see, if I kind of were to group these together, 2 times 2 times 2 together. It's the smallest possible combination. If you multiply all those together, you get 24. Okay, that's kind of what we're going to need to do when we've got variables involved. All right? So... Let's look down at this one. Uh, this one, basically what I, what I see here is that all of it is A's and X's and a 4. Okay, I can write a 1 here. All right, so the number part is easy. The least common multiple of 4 and 1 is 4. Just write that in. The first one requires that I have at least one A and at least two X's. So I'm going to immediately just write down A times X squared. The second one requires that I have at least two A's and at least one X. I already have the one X. There's already two in there. So I don't need to add another one. But it requires that I have at least two A's. So I'm going to change that to A squared. Hopefully that logic made a little bit of sense. Uh, another way you could look at it is, could I take what I have here now and could I rewrite it in such a way that I could see each of those original expressions? Yeah, I could have an ax squared in there because I've got my 1a and I've got my 2x's. The biggest mistake I think people make is they just kind of want to multiply this stuff together and they want to have like a cubed and x cubed. But when you think about that, you don't need three A's or three X's. Neither of the expressions require that you have that many, so you've got to know that you have too many. You want to keep it as small as possible. Okay, let's look at the next one. It starts to get a little bit harder after that. Uh, this one, the first expression, requires that you have at least two A's. Okay, we need to have two A's, A times A. So I'm going to write that in there. The second one requires that you have at least one A and that you have an A minus B in there. Remember, this is kind of similar to what we were doing yesterday in that you have to write everything as multiplication first, and then after you've written everything as multiplication, 
you have to treat things in parentheses like one item. You can't just say, oh, it needs one A and one B and a subtraction sign. Nope, you have to treat the A minus B as something completely different, okay? So all I'm going to do is put in an A minus B after that, okay? So, like, again, it needs at least two A's. That's my A squared. The second part here says it needs at least one A. It already had that. And it needs an A minus B, so I had to put that in there. Okay, what I want you to do is C first. I want you to try C, and I want you to try D on your own. You have to factor those expressions completely first. If you don't factor the expressions completely first, this will not work. Okay? So factor the expressions, and then try to come up with the least common multiple. I know this is tough. Pause, and then come back. All right. So... First one factors into 2a minus 3 times 2a plus 3. The second one just has a GCF of 3a, and I'm left with 2a minus 3. Okay, the first one requires that we have a 2a minus 3 and a 2a plus 3 as a part of our solution. So I'm going to immediately write that in there. Then, the second one, I don't need to do a 2a minus 3 because it's already in there. I already see it as a part of what I've written for my answer, but I don't see a 3 or an a anywhere in there, isolated anyway. I don't see them isolated, okay? The a's inside parentheses don't count because we treat those as one whole thing. So I'm going to put a 3a out here. That's my least common multiple. Uh, for d, the factoring was definitely a little harder here. The second one factors into x plus 4, x plus 2. That was probably the easy one. Um, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do this one with guess and check. I'm not going to show the splitting the middle term work. I believe this one factors into x plus 2 times uh, 3x minus 1. And you can check my work on that. Okay, so the first one requires that we have an x plus 2 and a 3x minus 1. Okay, so again, the x plus 2s are common in both of them, so I don't need to add an extra one of those in there, but I do need an x plus 4, because that was not a part of my first one. There's my least common multiple. Okay, if you've got a different way of, if you were able to still get these, but you kind of have a different way of thinking about it that's different than what I have, uh, you know what? That's great. Share that with your groups, okay? Share with your groups kind of what you're thinking and how you can uh, come up with least common multiple on your own. That's kind of how I think about it, uh, but there's certainly other ways to think about it too.